Welcome to your first lesson of week 30. In this lesson we're going to be starting off by looking at probability. Now probability we started learning last year and in order to make sure you understand everything that's going on with probability we're going to revise some terminology. So let's start off straight away. Firstly an experiment. Now remember last year I said to you an experiment if you've done a little bit of science you think about buns and burners and gases and that. That's not what we mean in maths. An experiment refers to an uncertain process process such as flipping a coin or throwing a die a number of times. When we flip a coin or we throw the dice we don't know where it's going to land up. We don't know if it's going to land up on a head or a tail or numbers one through to six if it is die. So you don't know that. So that is an experiment. The outcomes are what you get from a single result of an experiment. So if I flip a coin we've got two possible outcomes. Either we've got heads or we've got tails. Or if I throw a die, we could get one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? So an outcome is the single result of an experiment. Now your sample space is a set of all the possible outcomes of your experiments. So again, if we're talking about flipping your coin, your sample space is equal to a head or a tail. Now please note this nomenclature, how they are writing this out, how they're drawing this. You go S is equal to and then you've got this curly bracket HT. So your sample space for your flipping your coin is either heads or a tail. Your sample space for throwing the die is either getting a one, two, three, four, five, or six, right? So that is your sample space. N of S is a number of outcomes in your sample space. So in other words, the number of outcomes in for the coin is going to be how many? One, two. So the number of outcomes in your sample space is two. The number of outcomes in your sample space for the die are six because there's six possible outcomes. Not too difficult, hey? Now let's talk about an event. An event is a specific outcome that we're basically looking for. So that I get tails if I flip a coin is called the event. So the event is tails, okay? Or if I throw a six when I roll a die, that event is a six. So that's a specific outcome that I'm looking for is the event. The number of events number of possible events is the number of elements in the subset. So again for the above the possibility that I will get a tail is only one and the possibility that I will get a six is only one. Why? Because I'm only flipping one coin. So the possibility that I will get the event of a tail is one and the possibility of me getting a six is that. So probability, let me just go all the way through. So probability. The probability of event is a real number between 0 and 1. Okay, so in other words it describes how likely an event will happen. So for example the probability of getting a tail, what would you guys say? You would say well you got a 50% chance of getting a tail. Why? Because you've got a 1 in 2 chance. So we give it a value of 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is 5 divided by 10 which is your 50%. So it's half. It's when flipping the coin we don't know. It's either going to fall on the head or on the tail. So for example when we're talking about throwing um, a random number for a die, let's say we got we want to throw a 4, what is it? There are six sides. So I've got a one in six chance of throwing a specific number with my die. But now relative frequency, so that's your probability. In other words, that's your theoretical, your theoretical probability. Your theoretical probability is what we work out. The relative frequency is what actually happens. This is the number of times that the event occurs during your experimental trials. So in other words, if we flip the coin 10 times and it lands on the head 7 times, then the relative frequency is 7 out of 10 or 0 0.7. So this is actually what happens in practice. In practice, this is true. So probability is your theory and relative frequency what actually happens in real life. So let's talk about sets. The union of events is a set of all outcomes that occur in at least one of the events. So the notation is A union B, the U stands for union. So what we're saying is that the union, we've got 
set A, which is made up of 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's the first four numbers, and set B is 3, 6, 9, then A union B is going to be all the numbers that occur in at least one of the events. So A union B is going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 9, because 3 occurs in both of them, so we don't have to write it twice. So the union is basically all the numbers that occur in at least one of the sets. Whereas an intersection is a set of outcomes that occurs in all the events. It has to occur in every event. So for example, with this one, the A intersection B, if we have a look, and I'm just going to change color so that you can see what I'm doing. If we look at this, we look at exactly the same example. Do you see that the only numbers that occur in both set A and B in this case is going to be 3? So 3 occurs in both of these sets, so therefore the intersection of A and B is 3. Right. Mutually exclusive events. These are events that have no outcomes in common. They have no outcomes in common. So these events can occur, can never occur simultaneously. So in real life, an example of a mutually exclusive event is you cannot be at the movies and at the beach at the same time. Okay, so that is not possible. So that's a mutually exclusive event. Another type of example would be if set A was all the even numbers and set B was all the odd numbers, then there's no number that falls into both these sets. Then we say we've got no outcomes in common and we say we've got a mutually exclusive event. So we say that A and B together have an empty set and this is a zero with a line through it and that represents an empty set. So A and B together are an empty set and that means they are mutually exclusive. Now complementary events are two mutually exclusive events that together contain all the outcomes in the sample space. So again, if we think about it, if the event is called A, then the complement is called not A. So if we look at this example here, this here is all the even numbers and this here is all the odd numbers. So together they have all the numbers in the known universe, right? So the complement of A in this case, which is referenced as not A, notation A dash, not A, would be B. So the complement of A in this case would be B. And those are complementary events. And they're complementary events if between the two of them they contain all the outcomes in the sample space. Okay, 